Yo, Elliot, I have some questions concerning controlling sexual impulses and ejaculation during sleep, so my apologies if this email comes off as gross. <laughs> Number one, I've avoided masturbation for eight months now, and ever since I stopped masturbating, there have been multiple nights where I ejaculate fluid in my sleep. This fluid looks wa like watery semen but without sperm. This only happens during dreams, but most of the dreams were not sexual in any way. For instance, I recently had a dream where I was fighting a monster and all of a sudden I felt the impulse in my penis which caused me to ejaculate. This was not an issue when I used to masturbate. So now I'm hoping so I'm hoping that this is not indicative of some bodily problem. I'm honestly hoping that my body is not trying to tell me that I need to masturbate or have sex because ideally I would love to live my life without ever needing to pleasure myself. I'll be getting a blood test soon to examine my testosterone and my overall health. Do you have any ideas on why my body might be doing this in my sleep? So this reminds me of an interesting, just a fun little story that I heard uh, many years ago. I think it was told by Alan Watts or something mm -hmm. like that. And, and there was this guru, right? This teacher. So what do you think of the teacher? You think of a teacher or a guru or a master as someone, and he was considered a master, as someone who's, had, who's mastery over their body. Right? That's the first place to begin. The first place to begin mastery is with purifying your body. That's why fasting and things like that, fasting, meditating, are all forms of ha having uh, mastery over the body. Even semen retention, it's a form of having mastery over the body. This is why the monks and the monasteries and the sages and the saints do these various things because it's a matter of having dominance over my lower nature. Right. And so these are good practices. Well, anyway, so there's a story about this master and the master's master, his his teacher, who he loved dearly, died. Right. And so when the students of the first master saw that their master's teacher died. The master started crying. Now, this is supposed to be a man who has dominion over his body, mastery over his body. This is a man who has taught to have distance from your emotions. Don't trust your thoughts. Don't trust your feelings, right? He was sort of like a, maybe like a, like a, a Hindu or a, a Zen guru of some sort, right? So they teach these methods. They teach these, they have these techniques. Don't trust your thoughts. Don't trust your feelings. Don't, you know, get carried away with emotion. And so they see their master crying. And so one of them says, Master, why is it that you're crying? And the master says, tears are coming to my face. What can I do? <laughs> so simple, but yet so profound. The water is coming out of my eyes. What can I do? As opposed to being emotionally tied up or judging or having some kind of feelings or thoughts about it, this master, this man was so pure in this way that even when, even when tears come to his eyes, which is a form of, 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 of losing mastery over his body, he doesn't even blame himself. He just says, it's, it's just happening. Tears are coming to my eyes. What can I do? He has an ascetic lifestyle. He has many, many decades and years of mastery over the body. But even still, when there's a particular stimulus, there's nothing he can do. He's not justifying it. He's not excusing it. He's not upset about it. He's just noticing. And his student asks him why, and he says, because it's happening. <laughs> right? It just reminds me of your story because... You like a master, like a monk, right? An ascetic, if you will. I mean, it's so interesting to see asceticism sort of come back. This is what nofap is about, semen retention is about, fasting is about. It almost seems like asceticism is coming back. And so I think, and according to Rob Draher, who wrote a book called um, The Benedict Option, you should all read it, the, the idea of monasteries are probably going to come back as more and more men are doing MGTOW. <laughs> More and more men are get, becoming monks. More and more men are coming to the Lord. Right? And maybe it's because I live in a bubble, but I'm watching all these men who are like, it's like the time to wake up. And they're like, whoa, we've been living degenerate lifestyles. There's this movement towards monastic. There, should, there will be this movement towards monasticism, right? Where men go and they marry themselves to God.
right? They, they enjoined themselves with the divine. And as a result, they practice chastity, right? They're not jerking off. They're not, they're, and they're fasting. You know, they're, pro, they're practicing asceticism, right? And so it's, you're, you're doing that. You're practicing an, ascetic, an asceticism. But fluid is coming to your penis. <laughs> I mean, it's basically what it is. It's, it's just as the fluid came to his eyes, he was saying, well, there's just water. What can I do? There's nothing I can do. The body has its own mind. The body is just doing what it's doing. I can't get wrapped up in it. I can't get judgmental about it. I can't what am I, beat my eyes up. What am I going to whip myself? What am I going to do? The water is just coming to my eyes. The water is just coming to your genitals. It's just coming there. And as you funny, it's coming, right? It's just coming. <laughs> it's just coming. And it's so funny because you even say that, you know, I'm having dreams about fighting monsters and stuff. I'm not having erotic dreams because it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your ego. It has nothing to do with your mind. It has nothing to do with your emotions. It has nothing to do with anything except water is just coming there. <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's simple yet profound, but I invite you to consider. Judgment against the body is an, is, is, it's a slippery slope because, you know, on one end, we're talking about asceticism and having mastery over our body. But on another end, we have to recognize that our body of, is, is of its own nature. Our body is, is not much different than the body of an animal. And I'm not saying we're an animal because we have a soul and the soul is divine so that we have reason right? And we have intellect and we have a lot of the things that animals don't have so we can make better decisions about how we use our body and what we do with our body. But sometimes the body is just going to do what the body does, right? Do you ever, I mean, I know this is kind of a, a bad example, but when you got to use the bathroom, right? Like I got to go there. What can I do about this? Right? I know it's not appropriate. I know that it's not the right time. I know that we're supposed to be doing something else, but I got to go. Look at a little kid. I got to go. I just got to go. The body will, the body will do all kinds of, the body has its own brain. They say the subconscious, the brain is the subconscious body, right? Have you ever just been sitting and then like you start getting twitches on your body? Like shoulders just start doing this. I've had that happen. I've had it happen with my eyes before. I'm just chilling and then all of a sudden my eyes are doing this, Right? I'm not winking. I'm not thinking. I'm not even trying to make this happen. In fact, if I try to stop it from happening, this is going to do it more. And I'm just going to get frustrated. Right? It hasn't happened in a long time. But things of that nature where the body has its own mind and sometimes it's going to do what it wants to do even if it's against our will as long as we see it that way. If we start judging it or we start beating ourselves up or we try, start trying to take measures against the natural spontaneity of the body, a lot of times we end up in trouble. That's why I say it's a, it's a slippery slope. You're not lusting. You're not watching pornography. You're not masturbating. You're not doing any of the things that would be like worshiping the body, right? I heard the other day that every addiction is a form of worship. Every addiction is a form of worship because as opposed to disciplining yourself or, 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 or causing yourself to pray every day, you do one of these or you do one of these, right? And you do that and it becomes a ritual, right? There's the ritual. You're not engaged in the ritual of masturbation. You're just sleeping and the water comes. I would leave it at that. I would leave it at, at that. I wouldn't get too much more wrapped up in it. I don't know if a blood test is going to help you or anything about your overall health. I just think that sometimes that's just going to come out, just like the tears. Sometimes the tears are going to come. Sometimes the penis is going to come. And so I'll leave you with that. He says, number two, though I no longer masturbate, whenever I'm in bed, lustful thoughts start to sleep, seep into my mind. Okay. The Prophet Muhammad recommends people fast if they are not married. And I've been fasting to be helpful, and it's very helpful in reducing sexual thoughts while in bed. However, I seek to greatly reduce sexual thoughts outside of fasting. Do you have any tips on how to control sexual thoughts while in a vulnerable state? It's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. The thoughts will come. What can I do? 
The thoughts come. Now, fasting is great because fasting is what? A form of asceticism and all of this. Everything we're talking about, really, this is the battle of man against himself through mortification, right? That's what asceticism is. It's dying to the body. And you're already in that process. But the same way that the tears come, the same way that the body comes, is the same way that thoughts come. Boom. Boom. They just come. And how could they not come? We live in a pornographic society. We live in a society from the time you're a child, you're taught that you're supposed to want to have sex, right? And so without going too far down that rabbit hole, that's a part of the gynocentric world that has perverted our culture by making men worship women, right? When you, when you perform the, perform the, um, the ritual of masturbation, especially if you're watching pornography, you're, you're worshiping that God. You're looking at it and you go, oh, yes, I love you. I love this, right? You're, you're, you're having a mystical uh, worshiping experience. <laughs> you're not doing any of that. But thoughts come. What can you do? The best thing to do is not to control the thoughts, right? Because that's what wrestling is, right? Wrestling is engaging with it. There's, some of the saints say, don't wrestle with, with the demons. Don't wrestle with Satan. Don't wrestle with your lower nature. He, he, and, and I think it was St. John Chrysostom, maybe, who was talking about what happened in the garden with Adam and Eve. And she, he asserts that the very first mistake that Eve made in that instance when the snake comes and says, hey, Eve, you know what? And Eve goes, what? That's where she screwed up. She gave it attention. She gave it validation by engaging with it. Do not engage. In fact, I think it was uh, Ignatius, Brianna Shah, the Orthodox uh, bishop, who said that. It was like, the first thing to do is not to engage. He says, because Satan is much, much, much older and wiser than you. And that's true. You ain't going to beat Satan. So you know what you do? Flee. Run. Right? Do not engage. And so when you say, I want to control my sexual thoughts, essentially what you're doing is trying to engage your sexual thoughts. What I'm inviting you to do is ignore your sexual thoughts. Don't, and the difference between this is when you engage, you have a feeling about it. You have a judgment about it. You want to do something about it. You want to fix the problem. But essentially, what I'm saying and what Ignatius says is don't even acknowledge the problem exists because the minute you do, you give it life. That sexual thought comes, notice it, but let it go. Let it, let it. Let it skim the top of your head without making its way down. This is what happens when you engage a thought. Think about, it, think about even that term engage. Have you ever heard somebody say that? Like engage a thought, engaging in some thought. Engagement, what do you, who, who else do you engage? You engage a woman. That means I want to bring you in and I want to make you mine. We're going to become one flesh. When you engage a thought, you're making yourself one with that thought. <laughs> Don't engage the thought. Let the thought go. Engagement looks like this. I think I probably sound like a broken record, so I'm going to stop this pretty soon. Engaging is when you have a thought or a feeling or a judgment or you're trying to do something about it. When Eve was, when, the minute Eve turned and, and looked at the snake and was like, hey, what's up? What do you got to say? I'm going to engage with you. All was lost. So don't have it. And I think maybe the, the theme of our conversation here, an answer to your question, essentially, is stop judging yourself. God is not judging you. God is watching you as you seek to have mastery over yourself. And, and that doesn't go unnoticed. The creator will recognize that, right? But he's not judging the water that's coming to you, the water that's just coming out. That's just happening. He's not judging the thoughts that come to you, but he's watching to see if you engage. Let these things be. That's my advice. Let these things be. Have no feelings about them. That is the essence of this program as well. 
It's about not having the incessant thoughts, feelings, and, 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 and nervous, anxious actions or activity about everything that we do in our life and just allow ourselves to be. Allow yourself to be. Allow yourself to be. I'm no theologian. I'm no spiritual guru, right? No saint. But I will tell you, I don't think God wants you to judge yourself that harshly about things that are happening to you. Essentially, I don't want to say you're a victim, but essentially these things are happening to you. You're not doing anything about it. So God, God is actually just watching to see how you respond to these things. And right now, I think you're stepping outside of your walk with God when you start thinking in terms of how do I fix this? How do I fix myself? How do I remedy this problem rather than having compassion for yourself, being for, forgiving of your fallen body, your nature, but then also acknowledging that I'm on my way. I'm doing my best every single day and I'm never going to give up. So I hope that helps you, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.